Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning. Now let us first understand what are elements. Elements are the basic form of matter. These elements make up the other things around you. They are just made up of one kind of particles. If you have iron, go on hammering iron, break it into smaller pieces and every small particle of iron will look just the same. That means iron is just made up of iron particles. Even gold is just made up of gold particles. It is just the same throughout. So an element is the basic form of matter which is just made up of one kind of particles. An element is defined as the basic form of matter which cannot be broken down into simpler substances through any chemical reaction. That means if you want iron to be broken down into simpler substances, it is not possible because iron itself is the simplest substance. This definition was given by Antoine Lavoisier a French chemist. Now how many elements do we have around us? One, two, three, four, no. We have 118 elements around us and their information is given in this table. Every element is represented by its symbol. Okay, And the elements that you can see in green are called metals. The elements in blue are called non-metals and the elements in pink are called metalloids. Metals and non-metals have opposite properties to each other, whereas metalloids possess properties of both metals and non-metals. So an element is classified as metals, non-metals and metalloids. Let us see how metals and non-metals are having opposite properties. Now metals are generally solids at room temperature, except mercury. For example, gold, silver, platinum, iron, copper, etc. Then non-metals may be solid, liquid or gases at room temperature. For example, carbon which is found either in the form of diamond or graphite. It is in the solid state. Then bromine. It is a non-metal in the liquid state. Then oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen. They are gases which are non-metals in the gaseous state. Then metals are malleable and ductile. That means they can be beaten down into thin sheets. That is called malleability. And they can also be drawn into wires. So they are called ductile. But non-metals are neither malleable, they are nor ductile because they are very brittle. When you hammer them, they break easily. Then metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. That is why we have copper, aluminium wires around us. But non-metals on the other hand are poor conductor of electricity and heat. Then we have metals which are lustrous. But non-metals are non-lustrous. That means they do not shine. They do not have a shiny appearance. Metals have high tensile strength. That means how much ever pressure you apply on them, they do not break easily. Whereas non-metals do break easily. So they have low tensile strength. Metals are sonorous, that means they make a ringing sound when you strike them, but non-metals are non-sonorous. So aren't metals and non-metals quite opposite to each other? Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning.